Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exclusive chat with an artist formerly of Fur Hill. Um, I asked fans to actually describe this individual, and here's just some of the answers I got, which will interest okay. you. Um, yeah. A very skillful and hardworking player. Oof. Machine. Um, one fan quipped, Gerard based his game on Rouser. <laughs> Mr. 100% week in, week out, never below a six. Pointing. Um, great player, never gave less than 100%. Still my favourite Jag and Rowitzer. So that's a pretty nice summary of um, a man who played at Hill over two spells. It's Mr. David Rowson. David, welcome. And first of all, how are you? I'm good. Um, good hearing a few few comments there. I think some of them might have been in lockdown a few, uh, you know, a few too many weeks. They need to get out and... Um, it's affecting them a wee bit, but um, yeah, we're all good. Um, family's all safe and well, which is is the main thing. Just try to get through it like everybody else. Yeah, well, I'm clearly universally popular. That was the the, the overall sentiment was hugely positive, and um, we'll go back to how you first came to to arrive at this. We'd obviously had a long career. In, in, in terms of the start of your career, a long part of your career at Aberdeen, where you were born and brought up, yeah. um, represented at Scotland under twenty one level. Yeah. What kind What kind of player was David Rowson in his younger days, and, and what ambitions did you have at that point in your career? I think uh, obviously at the start of the career, it was brilliant to to be able to play for your hometown club and you know boyhood club. Um, type of player. I, I think I've always just been the same same type of player. Just giving as much kind of effort as you can, and and then try and be as good a player as you as you can be. Um, always been a. I like to. I've been a box to box player, and you know, get involved in all types of the action. Fitness was a big part of my game, so. I wanted to use that. I maybe maybe used it too much and did too much running about. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, that's, I think, just a player that wanted to give us all and, and play football, ultimately. You're clearly doing something right to, to, to get that many games at a young age for an Aberdeen team full of talent and also Scotland recognition at a time when... You know, there was a hell of a lot of good midfielders around as well. Yeah. So that obviously, in the end, you you chose to to try your luck down south. What 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 brought that about? I think just at the time, um, I'd been at Aberdeen, so that was seven and a half, eight years, um, from school, um, to about twenty four. Um, the the my time at Aberdeen was was up and up and down, the uh, kind of. Um, so many managers in and out the the door. Um, a few injuries. Just you know, a young player overused. Sometimes you, you do pick up these kind of injuries. Um, and I just wanted to try something different. Um, at the time, the the general manager at, at the time was Dave Cormack, who's now the chairman. Um. Didn't really see eye to eye with, with, with him. It, it, coming towards the end of my career, um, there was a few things in the press that came out that I wasn't really too too happy about, and just you know, just general general things that you you just want to try and get the best out of your situation. But there was other things that happened, so I just wanted a kind of fresh start and. The opportunity came up to go to to Stoke, um, and the time at Stoke, you know, I really really enjoyed the first year. We got promotion um, in the first year. Again, hit with a couple of couple of injuries, um, ankle, thigh, broke my foot, um, and then again changing changing the managers. Um, we got promoted, and the the manager got sacked. And then we had another three managers within the space of about six months. Wow. So, yeah, it's, it, it happens. And um, each manager will have their own 
kind of way of playing and it was Tony Pulis that came in towards the end and he just had his own you know own way of playing own ideas and types of players that he wanted to get in so yeah just had to had to move on again so you talk, you, you swapped Tony Pulis for John Lambie yeah <laughs> I would say, so the, the first kind of, first experience of that was Blackpool. Um, I, I met up with him in January uh, in Blackpool and it was an eye-opener to say the least. And um, in a hotel in Blackpool and getting woken up by Jerry Collins with some daft alarm clock. It was just nuts. <laughs> Um, training that, on the beach. That that was your first meeting with the, your teammates in the club, was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, obviously spoken on the phone, but then um, we, we was asked to, to meet up in at Blackpool because obviously I was still I was down south and it was easy to get up to Blackpool, meet them, and then um, meet them again uh, after the January uh, break was over. And that was the start of, start of that. Start of that. So that, that season clearly ended ended well. Um, yeah. Change, changes happened over the summer, then further changes the next season. But how, how difficult was that for you to settle properly at the club with so much so much change happening? Again, I'd, I'd had it throughout my career. My career. Um, I think in something like in eight years at Aberdeen, I had something like six managers, um, you know, that's including interim managers and, and things like that. So it's kind of used to it and you, like anything, you know, if you're a footballer, you just, you do end up just getting on with it. It's it's still the same thing that you're doing. You're still playing football and that's, that's the benefit of football. You just, you do just get on with it. And so, but yeah, you just have to get adapt to each kind of manager's style of play. Um, Jerry Collins obviously took over the next year, then got the sack, and then Derek White and and Jerry took over, and things. You know, we we were playing well, we just couldn't get a win. Yeah. So and then leaving for Hill and having another crack at England. What was the thought process be, behind? Going down south again? I think just because my, my time down south had kind of ended so soon, um, a year and a half, I wanted to try and prove myself, basically. Um, you know, my thoughts were I'd, I'd proved myself up in Scotland. I'd, you know, spent five, six years in the first team at Aberdeen, a year and a half in the first team at, at Thistle in the SPL um, and I just wanted to you know, prove to myself that I could, could play down there um, and it's, it, you know, you do get a little bit stale up in, up in Scotland just because of the amount of times that you play each team and it's maybe one of the things about this, this lockdown, this coronavirus that you know, it might change a few things. Um, a lot of clubs are, are struggling at the moment and they might have to change the, the setup of the, the leagues, which to me, I think will only benefit Scotland. Yeah, I think without getting too deep into that subject, the, the PFA Scotland did a survey of all their members and there's a lot of players, there's clearly a, a, a desire for some sort of change to just, you know, vary things up again. I, I guess that's something that's probably always been prevalent uh, amongst players. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, it's a balancing act. Um, obviously, TV won the four old farm games. Um, that's their biggest audience. That's one that will you know, get the biggest pool. That provides the money to help sustain some of the clubs. Um, so whether the, the players want it and whether it's financially viable, you know, you, you would have to talk to the people that run these clubs and what, what do they want. But I know, I know fans 
probably would want it as well. You know, a bit of variety. Um, it's it's difficult. It's been like this for, for years, longer, you know, than I've been playing football and, and being about. So um, it can be difficult to, to change something that's so set in stone. And, and going back to your experiences in England, bo both times, I guess, going down there as a, as a Scotsman, was there, was there a, a, a sort of feeling in yourself that you had to prove yourself coming from the Scottish Leagues to, to England? Is that something that's over-exaggerated? No, I think, uh, yeah, I don't think they see it that way. Um, I certainly never found it. You, you got the odd jibe, but... It's like any club that you go to, you're just soon welcomed if if you're doing the right things, if you're working hard for the team, you know, they, they don't care. Um, but the good the good thing was uh, my manager at Stoke was Icelandic. Um, so he's come from a, a small country and had Icelandic players there as well. So um, there wasn't really that issue there. Manager at Northampton was Colin Calderwood. Yeah. He'd actually come to see me play, uh, or come to see somebody else play, um, when Thistle were playing Hibs, and stood out. So I think because he's Scottish, he knows the game and never really had that issue as well. So did, did the other players still get the move? No. What's that? I said that the player who got, went to watch get the move now. Not actually sure. Um, <laughs> no, I, I never found out who it was he was looking at. So. But yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how it works out. Yeah. But then you came back to, to Thistle off the back of that and into, you know, a pretty lengthy spell with the club, which is where a load of these fans' memories come from. Yeah. Did you have other options when you... We're, we're, we're looking to come back up the road or you know ultimately why, why was this the, the, the option for you uh, I think um, at the time um, when I was moving back up I actually had a couple of couple of trials previously so there was nothing you know Thistle weren't on the kind of radar at that time they weren't interested in, in me uh, I don't think Ian McCall had actually been uh, appointed as as manager at the time, um, but prior to prior to moving, I'd actually had a Hibs had had a look at me in a reserve game in Stoke, and um, I'd actually had a trial with Hearts. Um, did okay, um, but they moved for a player called Phil Stamp. Oh yeah. He was ex Middlesbrough. Yep. And um, so they, they kind of they couldn't take two because we were pretty, pretty similar type of type of player. So, and then um, the opportunity came up to to come on trial at, at Thistle, and I think it was me and so he he already Ian McCall had already signed Liam Buchanan um, and a few others. And it was me and Gary Harkins that were on trial, um, kind of on trial. So, <laughs> and that was yeah, and that's where it where it's been from. Um, had a few games and then got signed, um, and that's it. The rest of his, his... the rest is history. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Well, Hearts' loss was definitely Thistle's game because you went on to have what five and a half seasons with with Thistle and. As we've mentioned, become a true fans' favourite. Ian McCall, what was your relationship like with him? Um, did you enjoy playing for him? Clearly, yeah, it was brilliant. Um, I think the one thing that you hope for in your career is basically a manager that that trusts what you do, um, and that was effectively what um, he did with me. He, he he trusted me as a player and it, it showed because he, he played me virtually every game. Um, and 
my relationship was was brilliant with him. Um, he took the piss a few times, but <laughs> that's that's his his style. But yeah, he's had a great relationship with him, and I think he wanted that kind of backbone. He always wanted that backbone of. So at the start, he had um, Craig Hinchliffe in goal. Um, I think he, you know, he had Maxi and uh, kind of spell between Maxi, John Robertson, and um, Archie at the back, and then wanted a kind of solid yeah. m- middle, um, and Liam Buchanan up top scoring goals. And you know we, we had a decent a decent team and probably should have done probably should have got promotion earlier than what we did in in the time there. Mm-hmm. And it's you know a bit of a regret that I think the season that St Johnston went up that was probably our best chance yeah. going up at that time and we just missed out on it and it was disappointing to get so far down the line and then I think the last five games it kind of petered out a wee bit. Yeah, absolutely. But your, 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 your first season, you got off to a flyer. You, you played a load of games throughout your years, but that first season, um, played of the year and clearly just felt at home. Yeah, again, that comes from, um, that just comes from trust, confidence. Um, if, if you're confident as a player, then you're, you're going to be playing well. And you weren't always looking over your kind of shoulder to think, right, am I doing the right thing or whatever it is. Um, you just trusted me as a player and the pressure was off so you could really just play and get on it and just show what you were about. So we're not going to go through season by season, but we've got... Um you know, memorable games and wonder goals are playing. <laughs> um, we've got a few questions from fans, so I might just start going through some of them now and you can you can yeah, see yeah. them in no particular order. Both William Jarvis and Heather asked, has the crossbar at Broadwood stopped shaking yet? <laughs> no, I can go and check. <laughs> <laughs> just along the road. Distance. <laughs> uh, just, just down the road, so um, yes. Yeah, one of those things just hit it absolutely flush and uh, can you believe as well that the keeper at the time I think it was um, oh God what's the he was only a small keeper but the keeper at the time actually said he got a touch on the bar. I was yeah, like no chance one of your fingers like didn't, didn't even sniff it he maybe touched it on the way back but. <laughs> one that definitely went in um, Wraith Rovers in 2011, Gordy Campbell, you know, how did you hold it together after that goal? You know, I'll let you, the tip, you can tell the story of that day. Yeah. Um, just really, really weird kind of day. Um, obviously, week after my dad died, um, my mum was in the, in the stand, so... Um, Felt pretty drained the whole game. Um, it, it was it was kind of a, a meaningless game as well. The, you know, it was nothing really to play for. Um, but it was after what had kind of gone through. It was good to get back out in the pitch and and just kind of you know take your mind off things. Um, and yeah, it's just. It's one of those things that just happens. You, you, it was a good ball by um, uh, God. What was his name again? Willie. Willie How? It was it Willie Howie? No. Oh, jeez. Picture the goal, mate. It's gonna kill me. Um, there'll, yeah. be, there'll be there'll be fans watching this shouting the name. Aye. Anyway, it was, you know, a good, good ball across, just took a really good touch and just do what I always do and just head down and put your foot through it and lands up in the, in the top corner, which, aye, it was, it was brilliant. 
Um, and the good, you know, the good thing is watching it back, watching it on on YouTube is probably the the support you got from the players. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and it's nice. still emotional now. Yeah, I think it's it's one of those goals that all Thistle fans still talk about because it meant it meant very little in the context of the scene, but it meant everything to a player that everyone admired. Um, more so the fact you managed to get on the pitch that day. But I guess yes. the footballer, that's where you want to be, and it, it, it's maybe the, the best place for you to be. What was it? Just six days on. Yeah, um, I think possibly what maybe a lot of people don't realise as well is that um, I think it was, I can't remember what, what game it was before, I think the, the week before, um, for some unknown reason, uh, my mum had called me the, the day before, or the about a couple of hours before the game and said um, my, my dad had actually been resuscitated um, so I was in, in the changing room prior to one of the games and didn't know whether I was going to play or not and just ended up playing so it was it was difficult um, and then obviously he, he did die and then um, ended up playing a game against Ray Throwers six days later. And good way to, you know, send, you know, good send off. Um, so, yeah, it was, it, it was a difficult time, really difficult. But good to, good to get back out in the pitch afterwards and good that my mum was in the, in the stand as well. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. That's really, That's really right. powerful. I'm sure it will be for everyone else, but um, a beautiful moment that Thistle yeah. fans, you know, treasure. So for you, it must be even more special. Thanks for that. Yeah, David. definitely. Um, was that what one of the questions was? What, what's your most memorable moment in red and yellow? I don't know if it's if there's another one that you would think of, but that's clearly almost stands alone for for not. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it's. it's but it's probably up there with, you know, a really good highlight in my career. Um, had, you know, a couple of promotions. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's probably good to, you know, hear, hear some of the stuff from the fans. That's probably a, a better highlight as well. So, yeah. Um, Alex McNeil asked, during season 2012-13, were you tempted to stay on in case you were needed for the running and, you know, the chance ultimately of winning something with this after so many games or had you made up your mind to, to leave the club? Yeah, it, uh, I'd never really made up my mind. It was kind of last minute. Um, obviously, um, I, I never really wanted to, to leave. I would, I would love to have, have stayed on, but um, for reasons I don't know, um, Jackie didn't want to, to play me at the time. Um, I was still fit. Um, obviously, I had a few issues with my back, um, but wanted to, to help out. And I think at the time, Archie wasn't really sure whether he was going to get the job or not. So. Mm -hmm. His initial thoughts were um, if he wasn't going to get the job, somebody else was going to come in, would I get a game anyway? And I didn't really want to feel a bit part player. Um, having played so many games, I would have liked to have kind of gone in, in, at, you know, a different stage, you know, maybe as a a winner of a league, but it never really felt like I was involved in it. I, I played one one game against Cove that year or something. Um, 
So I know, yeah, it, it would have been a false kind of. I know it's it's a it's a team game, and you. I was delighted that Archie managed to get them across the line, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, I, I just thought I wanted to play as much football as I could. I knew, you know, being thirty um, at the time, thirty six, thirty five, thirty six. You know, you you want to play as much football as you can. Um, yeah. So I, I eventually just made up the decision. It was coming to the end of January, and I just decided, look, I need to need to go, I need to play, um, and enjoy my time at, at Steny as well. Yeah. When you left, what the, did I mean, it was at that point it was nip and tuck with with Morton. Did you fancy Thistle to finish the job? Yeah, I think because we've been in that position before with um, with St Johnston, um, but it just seemed to be that they had the kind of momentum and the confidence within the squad to to do it. Um, it was a good good bunch of lads and they're probably a, a younger a younger team. Um a couple of older heads um helped out as well. But yeah, they just seem to have the, the momentum to do it. Um there's always a chance that they could have slipped up, but they just managed to keep it going and, and actually did a great job of, of keeping that momentum going. It's you know it's difficult for him in his first job to to then, right? How how do I not cock this up? <laughs> you did a great job with it. Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. I mean, your 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 influence must have been felt because it was, as you say, a young team and you know, relatively young midfield with the likes of Pates and Stuart Bannigan and Ross Forbes. I mean, having you around in training, you know, the years before and the first half of that season can only help them. Yeah, I uh, hope. Well, I hope they did kind of learn something from me um, in my time there. Um, it was also good to, you know, I played a few games in the reserves um, and it was good to see some of the, the younger ones going through. Um, Liam Lindsay, um, you know, he stood out at the time. Uh, I played alongside him at, at the back and I thought he was pretty assured then. Um, and it's, it's you know it's good that he's gone on to other things as well. Um, so that that was good, but never really kind of thought of myself as that. I always still thought of myself as a, a player, not an old old timer. Just I wanted to still do as much as I could in the pitch. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it did help him. Yeah, f- f- football often does not give you the, the fairy tale ending to your spells at clubs. I guess you, 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 it'd be nice to to have a, a final farewell with the fans, given you you provided so much service over the years. Yeah, I always wanted to get a get to a ten year period at, at some club. Um, obviously, I had the two spells. Um, yeah, they just felt really good to, to be there. Um, and it was a, a great club to, to play for. Um, I just, again, um, I don't regret um, not winning anything with them, but it's, it's always a disappointment that you couldn't have won at least something in the time there. Um, so yeah, that's that's probably one of the biggest disappointments. I uh, we're, we're probably gutted that you went around for the Ramsons Cup final because we could have done with you from twelve yards. We were. <laughs> yeah, was, I mean, yeah, that was uh, that was hard watching, definitely. Uh, um, it was. Uh, it wasn't the best game, but it was hard watching for for, for that reason as well. Especially yeah. with it, it was just three days, I think, before the the Morton. The, the vital game at Furrow, which was a, a fantastic night, but um, it was quite it was quite the season. Yeah. Um, one a couple more questions probably linked together. Stephen Campbell, are you still involved in football? And and you and 
why didn't you move into coaching or management? Are you still involved in any way? Um, I take my son's football team, um, and that's that's about as much involvement um, as I've got. It's it's not a great standard. It's not a you know a youth setup or anything like that. But it's it's a local team that my son plays um, plays for, and it's good. You know, trying to develop some of these players that you know maybe don't have the chance to go to a youth setup. Um, so it, it, yeah, and I've enjoyed that. It's been challenging as well because obviously, you know, you've it's sixteen, well, fifteen year old kids trying to organise them and trying to get them to training and trying to get them to turn up and fitness and all that kind of stuff. So. It's challenging, but um, uh, yeah, I think if with regards to coaching, when I went to Steny, um, myself, Brown Ferguson, and um, I can't remember who else it was at the time, um, we took over for I think a couple of games, four or five games, did okay. Um, we drew with Rangers, we, you know, um, I don't think we got beat. Um, so I think at that time, if, I, if we'd been offered the, the job at that time, I might have stayed on and, and gone on to do a bit of coaching. But I just see, I see so many pretty talented coaches um, that are out of the game and find it difficult to try and get back in. Um, I just didn't want to have that kind of pressure. I wanted a more kind of steady, steady role um, because of, you know, young family and, and things like that. Um, you just look at likes of Archie was out of a job for you know, a long, long period of time before coming back to, to Thistle. Um, Derek Adams, um, you know, coaches like that, and then they end up having to go back down <clears throat> to lower leagues, you know, that they might not be used to. So it's a difficult, yeah, difficult job to to kind of keep going at. Um, you have to be, I think, equal amounts of talent and luck. Um, it, it's you know, you've got you've got to have that balance. Yeah. Go back to your, your boys team then, do you do you take part in training? Do you get a kick about the end in the game? Yeah, I, I jump in now and now and again and go on a mazy run or something. <laughs> um maybe don't score as many goals. I never used to anyway. So um but yeah. No, it's good it's good. It's good to still get involved. And I obviously play over 35s as well with um, Ian Maxwell yeah. um, for coming old Colts, um, which is, is brilliant. There's no training involved. It's just turn up, play a game and go home and suffer again. Um, there's, 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 there is no substitute for 11s, is there? No. 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 Still, I know fives and yeah. sevens, especially fives, popular with the ex-pros, but yeah. there's no game like it. No. It's it, it's brilliant. It's still the you still get the same buzz whether it's old timers playing or whether it's you know professional game. You just if you love football, you you'll play any you know any, any of the games. So give us a critique of the Scottish FA chief executive at the moment. How's he getting on on the field? <laughs> um, <clears throat> Think that he could get actually slower, but yeah, he is. He's he's, he's slower. Um, I'm not sure about his footwear as well. I think he's maybe got specially adapted trainers or something like that. But um, yeah, now nah, it's it, it's good. Uh, Archie played a few times as well, so it was good to you know get in the field with them again and. Um, Maybe laugh at a few of the other players that are playing as well. 
there you go. Thistle fans, if um, if you want to see some red and yellow vintage when football returns, come on old Colts over 35s. Yeah, I mean, even even the game against um, Mary Hill Juniors. Yeah. You know, the, getting back in the field with some of the older players there was brilliant. Yeah. Really good. And it was, it was good to see that we could still actually play a bit. What about, what about Davey Irons fitness? It's on, aye, unreal. Aye. Unreal. I've actually, I've actually got a client um, who is friendly with one of my old kind of coaches um, for, I got picked for the under 17 schoolboys. And um, the coach there was, oh God, memory for that. Anyway, the coach there is, I think he's about in his 70s now, and he's still playing football as well. That right? Yeah. But David, I, David was brilliant. So you, clearly you're still in touch with a fair few. Anyone else from Fur Hill you, you, you keep in contact with? Former teammates? Uh, yeah, every, every now and again. Um, you know, we bump into each other, and um, obviously still in contact with Archie. Maxie just stays around the corner from me. Um, you were at a couple of duels events as well, weren't you? I think. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, and it, it's like anything else. You you keep in touch with some, but then you know everybody else gets on with their lives, and you know you kind of drift apart, and then come suddenly come together at a game like Mary Hill Juniors or duels testimonial, and it's just it's good to. Good to get back in touch with him again. Yeah, and do you get do you get back to Farrell? Obviously, you've got your, your your business commitments and your family commitments at the weekends. So you're a busy man, but have you seen yeah. seen much of the team since you left? Um, not as much as I'd like to. Um, obviously, with my son's team, some of the some of the games finish a little bit later than what I can, and you know you're kind of footballed out. Um, you just want to relax sometimes and obviously have to do all that stuff with you know, I've got a daughter as well and cart them about to dancing and whatnot. So <laughs> um but yeah it I do get to it every now and again and some of the some of the bigger games that I've been to as well. So yeah. you're, you're, you're speaking the language of many thistle mothers and fathers ferrying the kids about all weekend. So we, we all Aye. appreciate that. Right. Um, but hopefully see you back at Fur Hill when, when we get back to that. So, um, big one for you now is to try and muster together your, your best Thistle 11. I'd imagine there's quite a strong squad to choose from here. So, as always, set the rules. You're the manager. Don't need to pick yourself. That gives you another player to squeeze in. So, um, okay. from both, your, both your spells at Fur Hill, talk us through your David Rouse and Thistle 11. I've actually written it down. I had to actually go through Wikipedia and check out <laughs> the teams that I'd played, uh, played with. Um, again, difficult and, and difficult trying to shoehorn players that probably should be in. Um, I've played with probably a lot of, of good, good strikers um, and it's difficult to try to get everybody in there. So there might be a few kind of eyebrows raised with, with who I've picked. That's going to be a gung-ho formation, is it? No, no, it's, it, it seems pretty pretty solid. Um, right, on you go. So, in goals, I've got uh, Johnny Tuffy. Yep. Um, <clears throat> good, good solid keeper at the time and for a young, young player at, at that time. Um, it was good to, to see him do so well. Um, yeah. I thought he was pretty much an all-round keeper as well. Good kicking, good handling. I know uh, Craig Hinchliffe thought quite highly of him as well. So Yeah, occasionally he would just have like, unbelievable games. I think there was one at Hamilton, I remember, when he was just out of this world. And yeah. On his day, a hell of a shot stopper. Yeah, I think there was one as well that I remember that was up at... Um, St Johnston, 
I think he was just pulling off all sorts of saves. Yeah. I thought he was he was decent. Yeah. Um, at right back. Uh, so obviously there's there's been a few. Um, John Robertson's played there. Um, Stephen O'Donnell. Um, you know, a few others. But I've actually I've, I've gone for Stephen O'Donnell. Um, just purely his fitness. I, I thought I was fit. Um, but he, you know, kind of beat me at, yeah. at running, and I was normally the, the fittest out of the bunch. So, fitness wise, um, good speeds, good going forwards. Um, so he, he's, done, he's done okay for himself, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. And I think, he, you know, he's, he's that type of lad as well. He's a lovely boy. Um, so, it's just to see him do so well. Um, <clears throat> so centre centre halves, um, you know we've had quite a good bunch of pairings as well. Um, Stephen Cragen, um, Scott Patterson, you know players that I've played with. But I've gone for John Robertson and Alan Archibald. I thought Archie would. He's solid, you know, Mr. Dependable, you know, you always count on him to basically do his job. Uh, John Robertson was pace, um, good at reading the game. Yeah. He was probably better at centre half than he was at right back. Yeah. Um, I don't think I would put Stephen Cragen in there. The two, Archie and Stephen Cragen, the pace would be I non-existent. <laughs> so John Robertson, I am um, obviously missing out Scott Patterson, great coming forward with the ball, great reader of the game, but I think two centre halves. Yeah. That's my reason in there. Again, left back, a lot of good players. Um I've gone for uh, Mark Twaddle. Got towards my time, my second spell there, Twaz was, was brilliant. Yeah. Um, Man manager was a big fan of him. They really rated him, didn't he? I thought going going forward, his, his recovery, um, his, his pace to get back as well was was brilliant. Uh, going forward, he was he was really good, and I got on really well with him as well. Um, we'd had a couple of fallouts on the training pitch, but my nah, was, but. Yeah, I thought he was a, a really good player. Obviously, he missed out on some other players. Um, likes of uh, who we've got. Uh, again, names. Kinda. So, so they're pretty solid. I don't think many Thistle fans would argue with that as a back four. Yeah. Solid, but plenty of legs at full back to get forward. And that's what those two were really renowned for, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, you, and you. Pretty dominant to John Robertson and um, Archie. You know, pretty solid in the air as well. Um, you just you just need a David Rowson sitting in front protecting this. But we, <laughs> you can't pick yourself. So who's in midfield? No. So my midfield, I'm going to go with Chris Erskine out in the right. Um, I'll kind of give you the reasons in a minute. So. Squiddy, I what can you say? Um when he's on his game he's pretty unplayable, so it's I, I, I thought him coming in off the off the right was you know, you could cause a lot of damage with him. Um two I've got in the middle is uh, Danny Lennon and Lanigan. Yep. Um Plenty of legs in there as well. Uh, Banzo left, Danny right footed. Um, I think you saw as well at that Mary Hill game, Danny could still play. Yeah. Um, and he, had, he, he had an engine on him to, to rival you, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So I think the two of them is pretty, 
pretty solid in there as well. Obviously, you're missing out on likes of Sean Welsh and Peyton and um, Ross Forbes was good, uh, Brian Hodge, um, a lot of, lot of players really rated John Paul McBride and, and uh, Ryan McStay. Um, I thought they were all decent players on the day. Um, it was just probably maybe a little bit of consistency with them that, yeah. that didn't help. Yeah, McBride's an interesting one because a bit of an enigma. And, but clearly everyone who played with him, and especially when he was young, he was a, he was a huge talent. Yeah, the, the, the skill he had, him and Ryan McStay, um, really, really good natural talent. Uh, both could really good in the ball. Um, I think if if you could have if you could have matched them with kind of my um, fitness and the ability to get about the pitch with with their skill and vision and passing and you know you would have had a a really really good player but I think that maybe let them down a few few times just the fitness and mm-hmm. ability to get about which was unfortunate um, and on the left. I've got Martin Hardy. Um, I thought his the time that I played with him when I first came back up to, to Scotland, um, some of the goals that he was scoring from that position, yeah, able to get forwards um, and just being a handful. He was, yeah. you know, difficult player to play against. And pretty skillful on the ball as well. Uh, that 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 arguably was the the very very peak of of his powers, and he obviously kept it going for a while. Got his move to Kilmarnock, but you know he 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 earned that right to play at that level, and he he took his chance. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I think you've got a pretty decent decent balance in the midfield. Up top, um, again, you've got. Probably a dearth of players, uh, Jerry Britton, Liam Buchanan, Dools. Um, but my front two uh, is Mark Roberts. And yep. I've, I've gone for James Grady. Quality front two. Top the reason, yeah, I mean, the reason being Marco's brilliant at, at dropping in the hole and being able to create things and score goals. I think you need that up top. You need somebody that can hold it in. Yeah. Um, and we James Grady, he was just an absolute pet, buzz bomb, um, strong for, for his size. Um, and he could drop into the, the hole as well, or he could spin in behind. And I think we needed, you know, that, that was something that we needed. And he scored a lot of goals as well. Yeah. Um, so that was, that's my front two. Two very good. I mean, it's a pretty tasty team, that. Yeah. I mean, on the on the bench, I've got others as well. You know, you're missing it. I put McStay, Doolin, Patterson, Donnelly. Buchanan, Britain, and Harkins. <laughs> That's a big bench. We're going to the World Cup here. I know. <laughs> just try not to fall out anyway. I, yeah, I think it just shows as well that the the quality of the players that you have had through. Yeah. But there's been limited times that you've actually had that kind of gel. Um, I think if you could merge some of the, the squads that you've had. Thistle could have been a you know a pretty long stay in in the, the top league. Without I mean looking at that team it's hard to argue. It's a really well balanced lineup and loads of talent there, a couple of internationalists at least, a good few. Um yeah. and I'd, I'd be a I think I've said this with most Thistle teams so it's a recurring theme here, but it would be a lively dressing room and a good night out as well. Aye. I think that goes without saying for... I think it was part of the, 
the, the contract that you had to be able to yeah. lively night out and uh, uh, it, it, it's the squads have never been um never been full of shy players it's uh they've always been pretty pretty lively which you need you need a good team spirit without a doubt um that brings us to the end of our, our chat today um absolutely flown in it's been a, a pleasure to talk to you thistle fans are going to love this um and I guess it's just, hopefully it's been nice for you to, to to have a you know a wee trip back thinking about your time at the club and and, and hear from the fans how much how much they they appreciated you admired you and continue to do so. Yeah, def- definitely. I mean, that's me being uh, retired now for near enough say, uh, six years, and um, and it's the you know it's always good to be remembered. Um, but ultimately something that you loved doing anyway. So yeah, it's been been brilliant. Really good to, to talk about it again. Yeah. Isn't my dribble? I've got <laughs> I, I've got through it all without asking you about the the guitar in the background. Oh right, okay. Aye. <laughs> um I'm definitely there for show. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it, it seems to be that um there you go. Oh, all right, okay, cool. <laughs> Always seems to be as well. Everybody's got a, a bookcase behind them. So That's enough. I was actually going to pin up one book <laughs> and just say that's my bookcase, but no, it's, it's. Are you any good then? That was a. You... Um, nah, I just like to, you know, hobby with it, and if I'm. Just sitting up here in, in the office and just uh just trying to have a strum along to a song and but not for anybody else's ears. No, I was hoping we might get a wee rendition of Oh Mary I was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> next time. I I'll, I'll, I'll practice for next time. Well listen, th- thank you very much, um David. And obviously you and your family look after yourselves. Um, I know the, the, the career's going well as well, so hopefully you'll be back in the office soon. And um, yeah. once again, on behalf of all Thistle fans, thanks for all your service to the club. And um, I know you might want to finish with a wee message to Jags fans yourself. Yeah, I mean, um, what's been brilliant in this pretty unprecedented is the, the buzzwords at the moment um, is, is the pulling together of pretty much all kind of communities and, and clubs, et cetera. And just read it on the, on the website, the amount of cash that the Thistle fans have, um, have basically donated. And, you know, that's, that's, that shows you the, the, the type of club that it is. And it's good to see. It's brilliant to see, especially in, in, in a time when probably People are pretty uncertain about jobs and things like that. So, yeah, brilliant to see and, and just wish everybody um, the best of health and, and hopefully everybody stays safe and, and we get back to, to Far Hill pretty, pretty soon. Um, I think everybody, everybody needs it. Um, they, need, they need a bit of football in their life, definitely. They sure do. We sure do, and maybe, but maybe when we get back, that crossbar at Broadwood will stop shaking. So, yeah, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> David, thank you very much. Take no care. No problem at all. Soon. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.